Coming up next on Arizona Horizon, Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton joins us in studio to discuss air traffic noise, water deals with Tucson and other city issues. And we'll see why Arizona is getting good marks for its energy efficiency policies. Those stories next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Every month, Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton joins us to discuss a variety of issues impacting the state's largest city. And here now is Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Always glad to be on. A gay marriage ruling. Uh, thoughts there. Impact on Phoenix. Things like tourism, those sorts of things. What do you see? Well, I think it was a great day for Phoenix, a great day for Arizona when just over a week ago the federal court overturned our ban on, on marriage equality. Look, my feeling is, is that anytime civil rights advances, it's not just a win in this case for the LGBT community, it's a win for everyone when uh, civil rights uh, advances. So I'm excited about, uh, about that. And also excited from a business perspective. Thousands and thousands of couples will no longer have to leave Arizona to get married legally uh, out of state. They can have their beautiful weddings right here in Phoenix. And thousands and thousands of couples from around the country and the world can visit Phoenix and Arizona and have their destination weddings here. Is there a be more beautiful location than Arizona and Phoenix to have a wedding? If you want to have a, a desert feel, some of our beautiful resorts, Sedona, uh, Bisbee, you name it. Uh, there are so many great locations for wedding here. We're going to take advantage of that business. We have a great tourism industry. You know, it really was a victory for love. The love of these couples, some who had been together for decades, now to have the state of Arizona fully recognize a relationship, to me, that's a great day in Arizona. Uh, but for others, they say the court overstepped its bounds. Respond to that. Well, the, the, what the court did is uphold the United States uh, Constitution, as it happened already in 30 of the 50 states. We're hardly the first state in the, in the union uh, that uh, made marriage equality uh, the state of the law in, in our uh, community. So we're catching up to other states, and it's great that our state doesn't fall behind other states when it comes to civil rights and comes with the business opportunities that go along with civil rights victories like marriage uh, equality. So really what they were doing is interpreting the United States Constitution. Uh, they, were, they were saying that equality means equality and it's fundamentally, uh, fundamentally fair. I, I understand it's a, it's a difficult issue for many people. It's a controversial. I respect people who disagree, but I do respectfully disagree I think that marriage equality is the right step for Phoenix and Arizona. New FAA flight rules over parts of Phoenix, including some historic districts, have got some of your residents up in Ottawa. What's going on out well, there? Well, we are so blessed to have Sky Harbor Airport as an urban airport, just a few minutes away from downtown, one of the busiest airports in the United States of America. The FAA uh, had uh, worked with Congress. They changed their laws so they didn't have to have public hearings, which is really unfortunate. And they changed one of the, uh, uh, one of the departure uh, procedures so that it would create more noise over many of our Central Phoenix neighborhoods. There was a large meeting in which literally hundreds of Central Phoenix historic neighborhood residents uh, attended and they made a very strong case to the FAA that the policy that they adopted was the wrong policy. And the FAA even indicated at that meeting that by their own analysis, it should not have had the impact on the neighborhoods. Obviously, their, their number crunching, their analysis was wrong and they're going to come back to us in 30 days. And uh, I hope and pray and believe that the FAA is going to do the right thing. We don't want litigation if we can avoid it. Good um, uh, compromising minds can reach a reasonable compromise in which they can uh, still accomplish a new departure procedure, but in a way that doesn't have such a negative impact on our central Phoenix neighborhoods. Are you buying that safety and efficiency are the reasons the FAA made the, I mean, what, what, what was this, what were the safety concerns and the efficiency concerns before? Well, uh, look, uh, Sky Harbor Airport is an incredibly safe uh, uh, airport. Our aviation system, United States of America, thank God, is the safest uh, in the world. So I don't want to be a skeptic of the FAA. I want to work with the FAA to get to the right resolution. I think the best way to resolve a dispute like this is by uh, neighborhood leaders, as they have done, coming to the table in a very professional, well-researched way with reasonable compromises that have been presented to the FAA. The FAA listening to the people of Central Phoenix, understanding that by their own terms, it was not supposed to have this negative impact when they implemented this new procedure. Now that they know the facts that it has had such a negative impact, I do believe that they can get a new takeoff procedure that will still uh, be efficient, but not in, not in a way that has such a negative impact on our Central Phoenix neighborhood. Is there a timetable on when they might reconsider and when they might change that flight pattern? Uh, the representative of the FAA at the meeting, which is now a little over a week ago, indicated they would uh, re provide information back to us within 30 days as to whether or not they're going to be 
uh, changing this uh, departure procedure. Again, uh, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I think that it was an excellent meeting. Everybody came to the table in a spirit of compromise. I do believe the right thing will be done. If not, you'll be hearing from us more. I was going to say, because they're hearing it there in those historic neighborhoods. They they're, are. they're not happy about that. That's... Uh, nor they should be. If I, if I was in that same situation, uh, I would do the exact same thing they were doing. I'd raise my voice and, and come to the table with a reasonable compromise. Very quickly, uh, at Terminal 3 renovation at Sky, that Sky Harbor is going through some uh, an, another round of renovations. What's happening out there? Well, we just the city council a year ago approved a $600 million massive improvement to Terminal 3. As you know, Sky Harbor is growing. We had last few months, we've had a record number of landings and takeoffs at Sky Harbor. Business is booming. That's the number one indicator that our economy is heading in the right direction is the amount of business that's going on at Sky Harbor. And we've got to make sure that we develop a, a, an airport that keeps up with that growth. We have to have a growing and a, and a growing and efficiency uh, airport to make it as easy as possible for passengers to come in with the best experience. We broke it into three different uh, contracts just in case. I think it's the responsible thing to do to break it into three steps, each of, when, each of which are excellent projects in their own right, in case the traffic goes down a little bit. So we did approve a, a $100 million plus uh, portion of that contract, and we are in business at Sky Harbor will terminate three improvements. The, the project was delayed for a couple. Why was that? Because critics are saying that the, the, the council was pushing for union contractors. That's why it was delayed, and the delay cost money. Well, here's the reality uh, on that. First off, whenever my council members ask for a continuance on a project, I'm going to give them the serious benefit of the doubt. That's whether or not it's someone that's generally supportive of me on the council or someone that's generally critical of me on the council. As a matter of professional courtesy, you're, you're going to give that to them. It's a five-year construction uh, period. So there is going to be a five-year time period where the contractor, excellent contract, uh, Hunter, Hunt Austin, will have to mitigate those damages. So there will only be any cost if after five years they can't uh, catch up with a two-week later start than they were hoping for. Look, the reality is is that my colleague on the city council was able to get the information he wanted. He voted for it. In fact, it was unanimously voted for by the city council, and I have every confidence, as does aviation staff, that there will be no additional costs uh, to the uh, to the city of Phoenix, and we couldn't be more excited that we're advancing Terminal 3 at Sky Harbor. So that wasn't a push for union contractors? No, there was not a push for uh, for union contractors. Look, there's there's an issue at the at the city of Phoenix, at, as at every major government entity uh, uh, about uh, when they do a contract, what should be the nature of the, the contractors, the subcontractors, uh, uh, et cetera. In this case, it was a member of my council who asked for a continuous because he had a series of uh, questions. He got those questions answered, and I'm generally going to be supportive of it. I supported the contract from uh, day one, was prepared to vote for it, but I'm going to err on the side of giving my colleagues on the city council the space they need so that they have the information by which they can make those decisions. The uh, council also approved a resiliency fund for the Colorado River water, I think $5.5 million a year. What, what exactly is that for and how does that uh, pertain to the deal that your city struck with Tucson to store Colorado River water down to Tucson? Big picture, the city of Phoenix has taken a very strong leadership role on the issue of water planning for drought and potential future drought conditions, planning to ensure that we protect our water rights moving forward in the future. We, we all, we're fearful that if we don't use it, we may lose it. So the two major things that we've done in the very recent past, a partnership with Tucson, they're gonna store our water, they're gonna give us tax credits so that if the drought continues, we have access to uh, Colorado River uh, water. By doing that, we use a higher percentage of our water. We've created a over $5 million annual fund, a Colorado River Resiliency Fund. We're going to do much more groundwater uh, storage, partnering with entities that have existing wells like SRP, where we can use existing infrastructure to better store our uh, water. We're going to use groundwater a lot more. We're also going to do a lot more on conservation and really encouraging conservation among the people of the city of Phoenix, all geared towards the fact that instead of just spending money to deliver water and to create infrastructure for future water growth. Now, because of the drought conditions, 14 years into this drought, responsible leadership is going to invest in conservation, drought planning, planning to protect our water rights. It's equally as important as investment of building new, new infrastructure. And that's exactly what we're doing with the Colorado River Resiliency Fund. How much of a cost will it be if you decide to help Tucson expand storage capacities down there? I mean, because I think that is part of the plan, at least I think from down there, they'd kind of like to see expansion. Are you going to help and how much? Well, first off, we would any agreement that we would do with the city of Tucson would make sure that it's benefited both the people of Tucson and the people of the city of Phoenix. So we're not going to do any sort of a giveaway. But when it comes to water, water planning, 
planning for drought, planning to protect our water rights. We are all in this together, both the large cities and the state and agricultural and urban interests, which traditionally you think of as sometimes disagreeing when it comes to water issues. When it comes to drought management and planning for future drought, we are all in this together. And the people watching this show at home need to know that the city is gonna partner with other cities. We're gonna partner with agriculture interests to protect the long-term water position of the state of Arizona. So we're not in competition, we are partners when it comes to water planning in the state of Arizona. Our greatest threat is losing water rights to other states. We don't want that to happen. Uh, I can't get you out of here without uh, talking about Prop 487. Sure. Your thoughts on this, and again, uh, for those who are saying that it's, it's not gonna uh, affect uh, police and fire, now we're hearing it could affect police. This is a retirement, a pension, kind of a overhaul. What is Prop 487 okay. and, and what are your thoughts here? Well, Prop 487, unfortunately, if passed, would be very, very expensive. It would cost hundreds of millions of dollars as we transition to a 401k, which we would obviously have to have some kind of city uh, match for. As we eliminate deferred comp, we would have to, if we're going to recruit any kind of quality employees, replace that source of uh, income and we still have the unfunded liability you put it all together this is if 487 passes it's going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars and unfortunately on top of that the drafters of it drafted it incorrectly and drafted it in a way that says that the city could no longer donate to police and fire pension through uh, psprs which is the statewide public safety fund and i know what they say well hey the city can't uh, get out of the public safety pension fund and some court of law uh, is going to say that later on. Here's my suggestion. Why don't you just write the initiative right in the first place? Instead of insulting the intelligence of the people of Phoenix by saying we, we, we've drafted it in a way that would put this at risk and we hope some court of law fixes it, instead, just admit it. You blew it when you drafted it. You put public safety at risk and don't hope against hope that some third party entity like a federal judge or state judge is going to save you. That's not responsible leadership when you put an initiative on the but, ballot, and that's why I oppose it so strongly. But the other side says that the public safety personnel are exempt. It's explicit in the proposition they are exempt. And the Constitution, the state Constitution, says you can't mess with that anyway, that that's a false argument. It's, my friends on the other side on this one are absolutely wrong on that. They put in the preamble that it's not intended to affect police and fire. That's nice intention. But in the actual language that would go on our city charter, which is our city constitution, the exact opposite effect would occur if 487 passes. It specifically says that if we donate to the city pension, we can't donate to any other pension. They fall, they've fallen back on a different argument, which is, don't worry, some judge is going to save you. Look, in my time in public leadership, I've learned two things. Don't count a city council vote in advance of what's going to happen, and don't count on some judge to save you if you've done something wrong. Instead, responsible leadership gets it right the first time. That's why no on 47 is the correct vote in this situation. And yet the other side will say this is real pension reform. It's needed. You're basically bringing retirement benefits more in line with the private sector. You got to, you got a system run amok over there. Something's got to be done. Well, they must not have been paying attention for the last couple of years because we have passed significant pension reform in the city of Phoenix. In fact, new employees, as you know, have to pay about triple the amount of existing employees and the retirement age is significantly higher moving forward. This council has done the heavy lifting on pension reform and we've eliminated pension spiking for the city of Phoenix. We have said that the things that used to be pensionable, uh, phone allowance, car allowance, uh, sick leave, uh, any kind of reimbursement is no longer pensionable. 47 would go further. They would claw back and take accrued benefits away from employees. That is likely going to be illegal. If you bring any legal expert on here, they're going to tell you that if you claw back and take away existing accrued benefits, that's going to put us in court for years and years to come. We have passed tough pension reform in the city of Phoenix. The, the people of the city of Phoenix have done the heavy lifting through the ballot box. This is a solution in search of a uh, problem. We're always going to be open-minded to additional reforms, but 487 is the wrong reform. Last point on this, you said it would cost money. They say it will save taxpayers money. 31 million the first year, 395 million over 20 years. 
Who, who's, wh we got some numbers flying around here. That is uh, the tooth fairy type math, I will tell you that. Look, the only way they accomplish those savings is if we eliminate deferred comp and don't replace any, even a portion of anything. If we go to a 401k and have zero dollars uh, match, do you want the city of Phoenix to be the lowest wage employer in town? I had an idea. If we just cut wages 50% across the board, we'll save a lot of money, but it won't be doing right by the people of the city of Phoenix. We have to have excellent employees in the city in order to provide core services like police, fire, parks and recreation, libraries. Those are important services. If you hate government and you think that the government workers should have their, their uh, uh, compensation slashed, that's one thing. I disagree. I think that we have to have fairly, not overly compensated, but fairly compensated uh, city employees. So again, if you just slash compensation, you're gonna save money, but is it the right thing? I think the answer is no. So the only way they save money is if we massively cut back on uh, compensation for your core uh, city mm -hmm. employees, police, fire, parks, and uh, libraries. I don't think that's the right direction for us to go. All right. I think I know where you stand on 487. Why not? All right. Uh, good to see you again. <laughs> Thanks right. for joining us. Thanks for having me. In tonight's Focus on Sustainability, we look at a report by the American Council for an Energy Efficient Economy, which ranks Arizona tops in the Southwest for policies and programs that help improve energy efficiency. Here with more is Jeff Schlegel. He's the state representative for the Southwest Energy Efficiency Project, or SWEEP. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Thanks. Um, Thanks for having me. The American Council for Energy Efficient uh, Economy. What is this? What are we talking so, about? So they're a nonprofit in, in Washington, D.C. that uh, monitors state energy efficient policies across, across the nation. And each year they do a state scorecard, a ranking of states, which essentially compares all the states on an equal benchmark and awards rankings for, for the states accordingly. And the studies show that Arizona was number one in the Southwest for energy efficiency. What does that mean? So Arizona ranked the highest in the key area of utility energy efficiency savings. It ranked fourth overall, uh, closely behind three New England states. So it's the best state west of New England mm. in terms of actually the, the key factor of getting savings for customers, which is the thing that our organization cares most about, the real savings for customers that reduce their utility bills. Colorado was actually ranked 13th overall. F Arizona was ranked 15th overall, but in the key area of utility savings, Arizona was ranked fourth. Is Arizona, is that ranking improving? You said it's a yearly study. Are we getting better? Are we getting, uh, what's happening? So Arizona overall was ranked 12th last year, 15th this year, um, and Colorado was ranked 13th. So in the Southwest region, Colorado actually surpassed us overall. But again, Colorado, Arizona in the utility programs area was 11th and then fourth overall in the key area of, of savings. So that, again, that's where the rubber meets the road. It's the, the real savings that people see on their bills. And, and that's what we're most interested in. And, and, and let's talk about some of the, the things the study looked at. Energy standards for public buildings, these sorts of things. Talk about some of the, the metrics out there and how Arizona did. So on the, the metrics fall into six main categories. The utility programs that c companies like APS and SRP okay. offer, transportation policies, uh, building codes, appliance standards, and state initiatives. Those are some of the key areas. And Arizona did very well in, in savings and in the utility programs, and it did more middle of the pack in areas like transportation, building codes, and appliance standards. And are those things that Arizona is looking to improve? Are they difficult to improve? What, what's happening? Arizona has made, so let's take building codes, for example, where Arizona didn't score as well as we had hoped or expected. 
Uh, and there what you have is a, a real mixture in the state. You have some towns who are adopting aggressive building energy codes. And Arizona is a growing state with lots of new buildings being built. And so those towns want to build it right the first time and not have to go back a few years later and fix it. But there are other towns that haven't adopted building codes. And so Arizona is sort of a mix there. And the way to improve is to have more towns adopt uh, building energy codes. I know that the tax breaks for energy efficient buildings was mentioned. As far as policy is concerned, how does that factor into all this? Uh, the tax breaks are important. I mean, the most important tax breaks tend to be at the federal level, and so SWEEP is a supporter of that. In terms of state tax breaks, they're not a, a lot there. The thing that tends to make the most uh, impact on the rankings and also on the savings, again, is the utility programs. And the utilities, SRP, APS, are doing a very good job of getting those savings for customers. And that's why Arizona is high in the rankings that's, in that area. Some of those savings programs, though, are, are controversial right now because some are being fought, some may go away, some others want to see them enhanced. Uh, that's that's going to be a moving goalpost, isn't it? it? It will be. And in fact, we see states that do well in that area move up the rankings. And Arizona, um, there are some questions about, that have been raised about Arizona's programs. In our view, the proof is in the pudding. The programs are cost effective. They're saving customers money. They're reducing uh, utility bills for customers. And they're less expensive than any other resource that could be chosen to meet Arizona uh, energy needs. You mentioned the state. Uh, there are certain cities in the state that may be ahead of other cities, certain areas ahead of other. How about Phoenix? How is Phoenix doing in all this? Phoenix is doing well above uh, in the annual rankings of major cities. It was ranked 15th, I believe, because ACEEE does that as, as well in the last ranking. And you can see the city of Phoenix does well in some categories and not as well in others. So we're looking forward to the, the next ranking that comes out. What, what are some of the pluses and minuses for Phoenix? So Phoenix has a good, good leadership within the city itself in terms of its sustainability leadership in its department. It's run the Energize Phoenix program, which is a major improvement in energy efficiency downtown uh, in the multi-use uh, along, um, along the light rail. So those are examples of uh, you know, good, good policies going forward. It also has a good building code. So as far as Arizona's strengths in terms of energy efficiency, what are you seeing out there? I know you've mentioned some buildings and, and some plans and things, but in general, what do you see and where do you see uh, those strengths being enhanced? Well, I think the biggest strength is really in, in utilities and the utility programs. They offer very effective programs for customers. Those programs are saving money for those customers. So SRP, APS, great leadership there, and we just need more of the same. You know, continue growing those programs, serving customers. And then alongside of that are the reasons why we have those programs. So the Arizona Corporation Commission, and the SRP board, those entities, those organizations actually set the goals that the utilities are striving to achieve. And so setting those high goals has led to very effective programs, which has led to great savings for customers and a number four ranking in, in actual savings. And setting those high goals has also led to much consternation among those and in some of those entities you've just discussed. Uh, I mentioned the moving goalposts before. How do we make sure that whatever track we are on, in term, uh, we, you, whatever you see as a proper track stays on track? Well, the Arizona standard, the energy efficiency standard that the Arizona Corporation Commission, the, the utility regulators adopted, that standard was adopted by a bipartisan group. It was a mixed commission of Republicans and Democrats. And while there are many issues that are polarized in Arizona, the support for energy efficiency is really, there is bipartisan support. Republicans and Democrats both have supported it in the past, and we hope that we'll continue to see that in the future. In terms of what customers can do, Vote. I mean, if you're, you know, the Arizona Corporation Commission, if you want to have more energy efficiency, vote for commissioners, for commission candidates who will support energy efficiency. As far as challenges, what does the state need to improve? Um, the building codes is one area of improvement. Transportation policies is a, another area of improvement. Um, we've got uh, appliance standards uh, in terms of buying the most efficient equipment on, at, the, at the first time. Those are the three areas of, of uh, near-term improvement. And then, of course, retaining and maintaining the energy efficiency programs. As far as the transportation is concerned, that's, that's a big battleship to turn there, isn't it? That's something you don't see changing overnight. It is, and, and I, I know there's a lot of discussions, certainly with SWEEP and other um, advocates within the state of Arizona. Uh, SWEEP has a new transportation policy, uh, 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 policy department that we're working on new policies in terms of supporting electric vehicles and efficient vehicles, um, better um, reducing uh, vehicle miles uh, for commuting and things like that. So these are things that we want to support going forward. And so what do we take from this particular study? I think it's a great um, reward for doing well in an area that matters in, in terms of sweep the most 
uh, savings for customers, and it's a good indicator of areas of improvement that I think we all can uh, do better on and in the future. If I'm a politician and you're talking to me about this, and you and I say, give me a state, t tell me to look at a state, what are they doing really? Is there a state out there that Arizona can compare itself to and see as a model? Yes, uh, the states that are on the top of the list are the New England states, so Massachusetts and Rhode Island states that have good policies in all of the areas. Okay, but can Arizona be like a New England state? It can't be like a New England state in exactly that way, but Arizona is getting more savings for less money than some of those other states are doing. So that's a, that's a plus for Arizona. It can do so at less cost. All right. Good to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Tuesday on Arizona Horizon, we'll see how Phoenix City officials are working to mitigate the extreme summertime heat, and we'll find out how a superbug could cause a zombie apocalypse. It's on the next Arizona Horizon. That is it for now. I'm Ted Simons. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.